Hello everyone, this is going to be a video on how to convert, say, sales from one currency to another. Uh, we'll be using the Worldwide Importers database from Microsoft. And before we continue, we're going to just go over our basic assumptions here so we know what we're looking at here. Uh, assumption one is that we have a currency rates table that does not have any missing days. Um, this could happen if your source data doesn't have data for the weekends or holidays. Now, just because there's no rate on that day in your data table doesn't mean there's not a rate that exists. And if you have sales taking place in that day, we need a rate in there. Uh, there's a way to account for missing days and holes like that, and we'll cover that in future videos. But right now, we're gonna assume that our currency rates table is complete and has no missing days. Assumption number two is that we have a currency rate dimension table. Now you can create this based off your fact currency rates and add some different fields to it. And I'll show you what I did and we can take it from there. Um, we're also gonna assume that sales is the measure we're using in this instance are converted on the date the sale takes place. Now some business requirements might say we wanna take the average rate of the month or we don't convert it to a currency till the end of the month. So we wanna use the last available rate of that month. Uh, there are multiple ways of viewing this and businesses will have different requirements, but for this uh, demo, we're gonna just say that we wanna convert it on the day the sale took place. And going on this premise, we're gonna assume that all sales take place in USD. In future videos, we will cover if, say your sales take place in multiple currencies, how do you handle that conversion? Um, can be done. And it's not too terribly complicated, but right now we're gonna just start with, you know what, everything's in USD and we have a full currency rate table, so let's just convert it from there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the data model. Uh, like I mentioned, this comes from the worldwide importers. So, you know, it's a slimmed down data model. I didn't wanna bring in all the tables. Uh, so we just have a two fact tables, a sales and a currency rates table. And then you'll see the two fact tables are related to the DIN date table at, from the date column. Now this will be used as, you know, in our matrix or table or what have you, as a way to filter both. So that's important too. There's ways to say, you know, say the DIN date didn't have a way to relate to the fat currency table. There's a way to account for that as well. But you know, this is a, a simplified version. So we're gonna just go say, you know, they are related. And here's our DIM currency rates table, and that's related to obviously our fat currency rates table based on the currency rate ticker. Now, if we take a look at the DIM currency rates table, we'll see a couple columns here. The ticker, like I mentioned, is the unique value that will be related to the fat currency rates table. And I also have a full name in there in case, you know, maybe users aren't sure what, you know, CHF is. It's actually Swiss franc. So, Maybe we don't want to use a full name. Uh, now these leading text and format aren't going to be used in this demo, but what they're going to do is allow us to format the currency appropriately using one measure instead of having the right, say 15 different measures or how many currencies are in there to format correctly. And the sort order is important for the order that these are viewed, say in a slicer, uh, in my world, USD is usually used most. I want that up top. I don't want that mixed into the bottom if it's alphabetical. So let's get into it. Let's get, let's see how we do this here. So step one is to create your basic measure. Uh, we in this in this instance we're using using total sales. Um, in the in this demo we don't have a total sales column, so we need to use sumx to iterate the fact sales and just take quantity times unit price. So you can see. On the date, we just have total sales and scroll all the way down, you get your total here. Um, pretty straightforward here, nothing too complicated there. So here's our total sales measure. So we have that set up ready to go. Now step two, we're gonna add in a slicer from our dimension currency rates here. I went ahead and used a full name so we'd be sure on what we're actually selecting here. Like I mentioned, maybe you don't know the ticker symbols. Uh, maybe your user don't. So, you know, we're gonna use a full name here. Now, here we have to do two additional measures as a start. 
Step one is to figure out what currency the user selected. So you can see here I have a currency selected measure showing that they selected CHF, which is like I mentioned the Swiss franc. It's this measure right here. It's just the selected value of the currency rate ticker. Now, what's gonna happen if a user selects more than one currency? Well, instead of airing out, it's just gonna to default to the USD. Uh, that's a choice that, you know, depending on the business, different business requirements, it might need to be a blank, uh, raise an error or so forth. But in my world, you know, I want to say, you know, if there is more than one, we'll go to USD because the user should understand these are USD. And one thing I found helpful to have is just, you know, what's the current date? Now, when I say current date, I don't mean what's the date today. I mean, what's the date today in the current filter context? So if you look at current date here, we could see current dates, you know, 1, 1, 2013, 2, 3, 4, all the way down. You'll see in a second why that's important. Um, we wanna know where we are, and you know, where we are means where we are in the current filter context. So just to show that these work, let's go ahead and change this to Canadian dollar and see the ticker here is CAD. And then if I have too many selected, like I said, it defaults to USD. All right, now let's go to the, to the final table to see how we put these together to get a converted value. So here is the final measure to get the converted sales. Um, I like to use variables because it cleans up your code and makes it easier to debug and at times it can be faster. Uh, not so much in this instance, but at times it can help if you define it as a variable. So what are we looking at here? So we wanna know where we are in the current date. So we have a variable defined as date, which currency we selected, which is the previous two measures we just created, and then the measure we want to convert. Now this could be changed to anything, it could be profit or margin or what have you, but we're gonna stick with total sales since that's what we're doing through here. Now here is the, we're gonna put it all together to get to get the rate, you know, how do we know what rate we're, we're, we need to get? So we're gonna look up the fat cross rates table. So we want to bring back a cross rate from this table, but what cross rate? We wanna look up the currency selected against the currency ticker. So those, that's why we have the currency selected as a ticker. And then what date? The date being the current date in the current filter context. So that will pull back one cross rate because we only have one currency selected at a time. So with that cross rate, we just take that variable and multiply it by our sales variable and you get a converted value. So what you see here is that there's no currency selected. So those would be USD. So say I select, let's go Euro. Now we're in Euros. Now a cool thing you can do is we can take a, a column from our currency rates table or dimension table, excuse me, and put it on columns. And now it says Euro and then we can get rid of, say we select them all. And now you have every single currency selected and converted. How cool is that? So you wrote one measure one final measure, you know, you had to build up to it, but you have one measure of converted sales, which is here, and it converted to, I don't know, 15, 20 currencies pretty fast. I thought, I think that's pretty cool. Like you just write one, one measure, one pretty simple measure, and it converts it correctly. So that, that, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, that's that's pretty straightforward. Now you'll notice here that these are not formatted. So US dollars, Australian dollar, like they're gonna be different formats, which I mentioned earlier, this is when we bring this leading text and format in, in the play. Uh, that'll be a, a different video, but you'll see that we'll be able to write one measure, this measure here, and it will convert to the appropriate format without having to write 15, 20 measures 
to account for every currency we have. So with that being said, some future videos, like, uh, we're, like I mentioned how we're gonna format the currency properly using one measure. Uh, I, I don't like repeating measures over and over again just to change the format of it. I don't wanna sales USD, sales Euro, sales Australian dollar. I, it's cumbersome, it's gonna become too hard to man, manage. I want one, I want to convert it on the fly correctly. Uh, like I mentioned on the beginning of this video, how to handle missing days in the currency rates. Um, it's not as complicated as it sounds. There's a couple different ways to handle it. You can use Power Query or DAX. Uh, for this type of thing, since it's a data modeling type issue, I like to stick with Power Query, but we'll show you both. Uh, and then how to convert sales that I have a variety of currencies as their base into one currency. So if you have sales in Euro, USD, you wanna convert all those into say Norwegian dollar. Well, how do you do that? You can't, you can't just use one rate, so we'll show you how to do that. And then how to use different base measures. So instead of total sales, say we have total sales, total margin, total profit, and how to get those values to show their converted rate without having the right, you know, four or five different measures just to get that. So you don't want a, a converted sales. You don't want a, com a converted margin, a converted, you know, XYZ. You want a converted metric total measure. And then in that measure, we'll feed it different types of base measures. So that's pretty cool. Um, for me, it's all about not repeating code and measures and formulas and what have you if we don't have to. Uh, just takes a little bit of creative thinking, but we'll show you that, you know, it's not that hard and it does some really, really cool things that, you know, Excel and all that just can't handle, just won't do, at least if they can, just not easily. So I hope you found it you know, fun, hope you got something out of it, and I look forward to showing you the other, other techniques. Take care.